Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. It has been a couple days since I made a video. Today is May the 23rd. It is Sunday morning. It is 9.41 here in West Michigan. My wife went to church this morning. It's the last Sunday. They have Sunday school. Then they are out for the summer. Yeah, her Sunday school class is on, I think, family and marriage. <laughs> uh, been writing in my diary. I already wrote a page. 577. Now I'm on page 578 for the year 2021. I think we're right on schedule. So writing in my diary, and it's like, I've been mentioning and I've been kind of out of it. I say that a lot in these videos. I'm always out of it about reading in the mornings. And I was thinking about that of why. And I think what it was, or what it is, is that in this whole process of purging our library, my library down the lower level, determining what to keep and what to take to the Gateway Center Rescue Mission, Holland Rescue Mission and to take to Blue Stocking Bookstore for um, in-store credit. I kind of immersed myself in literature outside of Christianity. And... Uh, but I have been wondering if maybe the books I have been collecting last 10, 12, 13 years, maybe I'm in a different place <laughs> as far as literature. Now, because I don't know, you know, what are my favorite writers today? Uh, when I start collecting books th from used book sales and thrift stores, I bought the books that I read when I was in my 20s or writers that I were familiar with throughout my adulthood like John Updike and Saul Billows and Norman Mailer and then later on Joyce Kara Oates and existentialist philosophers and The Beats, Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, Ginsburg and Herman Hess and Thomas Mann and so then I thought to myself what would I collect today if I didn't collect the books of my youth I don't really know I still like William Voldman still like uh, David Foster Wallace Iris Murdoch Gail Godwin I, I, People like that, Edmund Wilson, Marikami, people like that. I don't know. So the point is, is that this is a Sunday. What am I going to read in the new week that's ahead? And last night I took a ton of books down the lower level and I'm trying to focus on certain books. I was, t I was reading all over the place for a couple of weeks due to being out of it and uh, this morning uh, like I said I'm, I'm trying to get back into reading uh, Rudolph of Saxony Life of Jesus Christ part 1 volume 2 chapters 41 to 92 I start chapter 53 this morning witnessing to Christ and the fear of death Matthew 10 28 through 33 which reads uh, this is Matthew 10 verse 29 to 33 and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. 
Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before him, men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So I'm going to start reading that this morning, his reflections, exposition in this book. So I'm trying to get back into this. I put this, keep this on my desk in my study. I'm going to try getting back into reading this, interpreting scripture with the great tradition, recovering the genius of pre-modern exegesis. No, I got the wrong book. <laughs> I wanted the great tradition in on the contemplating God. I got the wrong one. But anyway. And then I want to get back into God himself. Scripture and Metaphysics and the Task of Christian Theology by Stephen J. Dumby. Now, I told my wife this morning that I'm trying to read things that are not so taxing on my brain, intellectual, and maybe reading books like this, and books like this. Now, I really enjoying this book, God Himself. Highly recommend it. But I don't know. I can read Rudolf of Saxony because it's more reflection, it's more meditating and not intellect. There is a certain amount of intellectual activity that goes on, but not as much if you're reading something really heavy academically as a Christian. I got a book in the mail that I came across on the internet. This is a biography on the St. Bernard of Claveau, An Inner Life by Brian Patrick McGuire. I came across this in some, some place, but I got this for $6. <laughs> it was going for 40 on a website and I checked it at Amazon and they were selling it for $6. And, uh, so I got this in the mail yesterday. Not only have I been writing in my paper diary, but I've been writing in a composition. I found out that since all this mental activity and disruption and just being out of it, I've been writing a lot. And so I've been writing also outside of my paper diary into a composition. Just excess overflow. <laughs> so I've probably been writing around 10, 12 pages a day lately. As far as, I, like I said, I took a lot of books off my to be read pile in the living room, and these are the ones I kept up here. I took a ton down the lower level, but I'm going to keep trying to read this book. Uh, the Illustrious House of Rambries. Rom Rombres, and this is by a Portuguese writer from the 19th century. His name was, uh, I don't know, I can't pronounce his name, Iga de Gores. This is translated Portuguese by a very famous translator, Margaret Joel Costa. And I want to get back into reading The Professor of Desire by Philip Roth. I want to get back into reading this biography of Philip Roth. Uh, the Biography by Blake Bailey. I want to get back into reading these. At least this into this month into June. I'm halfway through these stories in Life and Bitters by Joseph, Joseph Plath. And I want to keep reading these essays by the Hungarian Laszlo F. Floydin, Melancholy. I want to keep reading this memoir by Terry McDowell, The Accidental Life, an editor's notes on writing and writers. I'm half, halfway through this. And I want to keep reading A User's Guide to Melancholy by Mary Ann Law, which is a user's guide to Richard Burton's 17th century masterpiece, The Anatomy of Melancholy. I, I read this, I want to keep reading this. 
So these are the kind of things I kept up here near me that I didn't take down in the lower level library. These are things I'm trying to focus on. We'll keep reading. These things I have been reading, but not really focusing as much as I should have been reading other things. But I want to get back into reading Philip Ross's biography by Blake Bailey. I want to get back into reading this. I was really enjoying this new translation. Writing in my... Like I said, I don't usually write in these. This is very rare. I don't know if I've ever done this in the last 40 years written in a composition, but I don't know. I have my... I, I try to... I've always limited myself in my paper diary to writing three or four pages and not that much, but I've been... Well, but now I just want to keep writing. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm getting older, facing my birthday. Life just seems to be going by and I got a lot on my mind. So I've been writing the overflow in my composition books and I'm going to start reading this. This I just got in the mail yesterday. So reading um, Bernardo Corbeau. Uh, he was he born in he was born in 1090 and he died in 1153. It's kind of considered the last of the church fathers. So it's a new week. I don't really have anything going on this week. Just try to hang in there. Keep seeking the Lord. Try to get my... I was thinking I might even just cut down my reading on these other books and just read the Bible and read the life of Jesus Christ and fast and pray and I just been kind of I need to get my focus so I hope you had a good weekend I hope you have a good reading week uh, I still haven't shown those thrift store books from last week I might do that tomorrow for a Monday Reads they're all down the lower level, piled up. But we'll see how I feel. So thank you for the comments. Thank you for uh, sharing with me what you're reading and what's on your mind. So I'll close. And until next time, bye.